So this right here. Now it says that sometimes solving systems with substitution can yield some strange results. Strange results. Now what do they mean when they say strange results? Well, let's take a look here. We're going to do two more examples. Here's number five. We're going to use the same method, substitution. The first thing I'm going to do is get y by itself. I'm going to take that 5x plus y equals 2, and I'm going to get y by itself, which means I'm going to move that 5x over by subtracting. So there's the first step. I'm doing exactly everything the same way I did earlier. Now I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to take out the y on the other equation, and I'm going to replace it with a negative 5x. Here's what I've got. Let's use some distributive property. 2 times negative 5x is a negative 10x. 2 times 2 is going to give me a 4. And of course, it still equals 9. Now I need to combine the like terms. I've got 10x minus 10x. What is 10x minus 10x? 0x. There are no more x. They're all gone. So I've got 4 equals 9. Now remember, it says something strange was going to happen. What's so strange about that? What's missing? There's no more variables. So that's one thing. It's no more variables in the equation. What else do you notice about what this says here? It says that 4 is equal to 9. Is $4 the same thing as $9? No, this is not true. 4 is not equal to 9. That is absolutely false. And anytime we have a false statement like that, we say that there is no solution. No solution. In other words, if we had graphed these two lines, what would have happened if we would have graphed those two lines? Parallel. They would have ended up being parallel, which is why we're having no solution. So this is what a no solution is going to look like working it algebraic. You're not going to have a variable. And the two numbers are going to be different. They're not going to be equal to each other. All right, let's take a look at number six. Number six. Something strange is going to happen on number six as well. First thing I need to do is get a variable by itself. Which variable are we going to get? An x or a y? What do you want to do? X or y? Y on which one? The first one or the second one? First one. Okay, let's take the first equation. And you said, which one are we going to get by itself? The y? Okay, we'll get y by itself. We'll move the 3x over first. We'll add it. So now we've got 3x minus 24. Anybody see what's going to happen? What's going to happen when I do uh, division of 9? You're going to get a fraction. You guys like working with fractions? I don't either. Is there a way we can avoid the fraction? Anybody see anything we can do to avoid that fraction? How about we do this instead? Let's go ahead and use that equation. But rather than getting y by itself, what if we get the x by itself? Let's see if that's going to make any, any difference here. Let's move the 9y over. So now we got negative 9y minus 24. Still going to have to divide. What are we going to divide by a negative 3? If I divide by negative 3, am I going to get any fractions? No, not this time. So this is why I say something. You've got to really look at what you have to determine what variable you're going to get by itself. Um, negative 9 divided by negative 3 would make that a positive 3y. A negative 24 divided by negative 3 would be a positive what? 8. So that looks a lot better. I don't like fractions any more than you guys, so that's one way we can avoid the fractions. Okay, there's the first step. Now we need to take that and plug it into the other equation. So now we're going to use the 2x minus 6y equals 16. Of course, we're going to replace the x with a 3y plus 8. Let's see what happens this time. 
2 times 3y. 2 times 3y is 6y. 2 times 8. 2 times 8 is 16. So here's where I'm at so far. Look what happens when we combine the like terms. 6y minus 6y. 6y minus 6y is 0. No more y. So all we have is 16 on the left, 16 on the right. So again, something strange happened. Just like number 5, there is no more variable. But look at the statement. It says 16 is equal to 16. Is that true? Yes. And because that is true, we don't say there's no solution this time. What do we say instead? There's an infinite number of solutions. This is one of those examples of using or the uh, coinciding lines. This is an example of when those two lines are on top of each other. Now, again, we don't see these quite a bit. But every now and then you'll come across one that has no solution and an infinite number of solutions. And this is what it's going to look like when we solve it algebraic. All right, so this takes care of substitution method. Substitution method. So let's see if we can summarize real quick what we just found out. It says when solving systems algebraically, and you come up with a statement that is what? Not true. When you end up with an equation that is not true, and they give you an example over here, 4 is not equal to 9. That is not true. This system has no solutions. No solutions. Or it is, what do we say when we have no solution? We call that inconsistent. Inconsistent. Or graphically, these equations, uh, the equation lines would be fair parallel. Anytime we have no solution, we know the lines end up being parallel. Again, this is only if the equation is not true. The other example we had was what if it is true? Well, if you end up with an equation that is what goes in the blank here is always true, such as this case right here, negative 24 equals negative 24. Then the system has a infinite number of solutions. Or it is, what do we call it when it's a infinite number of solutions? We call it consistent. Or graphically, the equations lines would be what? Co and oops, coincide. 